Marijuana has been a miracle plant since long before the DEA used it as their primary excuse to arrest people on the street. And like the famous philosopher Tommy Chong once said, if more people were stoned, there'd be less violence in the world. But with more and more states legalizing hash, we have to ask ourselves, is wake and bake really the best life principle to live by? And how does it affect our dreams? Well, my name is Jesse Lyon. I'm a professional dream researcher, and this is Lyon Mental Health. But before we start, hit subscribe to get more content about your dreams and to learn what they mean for your mental health. If we're really honest about this subject, you're not here to actually hear what the facts are. You just want to confirm your previously held bias. Because I know that you probably clicked on this video looking for permission to do the things that you know that you're going to do already. So I'm not going to change your mind. And I'm not going to stop you. That's not the kind of guy I am. Have your life. It's a free country. Do what you're going to do. But for those of you who are actually curious about what the effects are and if it's going to affect your dreams or not, I'm here to give you those answers. There are some wonderful people that I really look up to uh, Matt Walker and Andrew Huberman uh, are two just incredible sleep experts and dream experts that have real science and real data behind what this stuff means and I'm gonna be quoting them quite a lot in this because it actually comes from a video that recently I just watched called does marijuana affect your sleep and it's by these two talking back and forth about their research does marijuana disrupt sleep yeah, it, it does. And well, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> no, no, but it does disrupt sleep and they're absolutely 100% right. It does disrupt sleep, but there's some back and forth between it. I know, and I've often said on my social media channels that I encourage THC use and I encourage marijuana use for certain instances and for certain circumstances, as long as you've talked with your doctor and had it medically prescribed by someone who knows what they're talking about. Because THC does reduce the amount of time you spend in REM sleep. And we know that REM sleep, even though you dream through all phases of sleep, REM sleep is where you experience the most intense dreams. Because in REM sleep, your mind is trying to put together new neural pathways. And so you're connecting new and disparate ideas. Disparate, who the hell uses disparate in a normal everyday sentence? It's putting together weird inside of your brain in new and like interesting ways so you can come up with new ideas for your day. Now this is difficult when you have trauma because you'll have a memory of that traumatic experience you had when you were a kid, but it's combined like with your boss at your job at Kohl's. So it, it just gets weird. And that's the part of REM sleep that makes it so magical because it puts together these new ideas so you can come up with new discoveries, right? This is where a lot of scientists have come up with new ideas about inventions and things in order to help them invent because they're coming up with new ideas because that's what REM sleep does. It creates new connections inside of your brain. Now, it reduces that. THC reduces the amount of time you spend in REM sleep. And so there's some interesting things that happen. When you take THC, you do fall asleep faster. Matthew Walker uses the term sleep kind of with a little tongue in cheek here because he actually calls it so you could argue it's non-natural and matthew walker says falling asleep with thc is a non-natural way to fall asleep many people use thc for that fact because they find it difficult to fall asleep and most of the people that i talk to use it for the same kind of reasons they have difficulty falling asleep and thc helps them fall asleep so they feel like it's good for them it's arguable right if there's no other way for you to sleep then okay i understand it and it has been prescribed in the past for just those situations especially if you're hyper vigilant and you're at a high anxiety stress level and there's no way for you to get it down you have to sleep and so taking thc to help you with that i've heard it prescribed in the past but matthew argues here that you're disrupting the natural pattern and so you're actually not going to heal your traumatic memories you're not going to experience the mental and emotional improvements that sleep has to offer because you're not getting a balanced sleep and so sure you fall asleep a little faster but at what cost and i think that's a great question that you have to ask yourself now there's a second problem here when you take thc you become emotionally dependent on it there's kind of an argument of whether you can actually be addicted to marijuana and even the term addicted is actually not really in vogue with the psychological community anymore we actually have changed the terminology and even the aca uh, and the apa have spoken out against the term addiction they call it substance use disorder addiction is kind of a frowned upon like negative term it, kind of in the same way that we don't use uh, we use like mentally delayed or mentally handicapped instead of the old term which was retarded that that's, that's an inappropriate and, well, it's just a not nice term because now we understand more about how these things work and so we can use better terminology. And I do agree with that. So you start to need more to get the same sleep benefit. And when you stop using, you usually get a very severe rebound insomnia. And in fact, it's so potent that it's typically part of the clinical um, withdrawal profile from THC, from cannabis. 
So can you become addicted to marijuana? Research is kind of like inconclusive about it. Some people say no, but it does create an emotional and psychological dependence because if you need sleep and the only way that you've learned to get sleep is by ingesting marijuana, well, if I say that I'm gonna take marijuana away from you, it's gonna create some anxiety in you and it's gonna convince you that you can't fall asleep any other way. That's an emotional dependency. That is really something interesting to talk about and something worth understanding and thinking about. But many people use THC for that fact because they find it difficult to fall asleep and it can speed the onset of at least non-consciousness, I guess is the best way of describing it. Now, beyond that, the dependency, what does happen is because THC reduces the amount of REM sleep you get, once you stop taking it, your brain tries to rebound. But there are problems with THC and there are twofold. The first is that it too, but through different mechanisms, seems to block REM sleep. And that's why a lot of people when they're using will tell me, look, you know, I, I definitely, I was dreaming, I don't remember, you know, many of my dreams. And then when they stop using uh, THC, they'll say, I was having, you know, just crazy, crazy dreams. And the reason is because there is a rebound mechanism. So not only does it reduce the amount of REM sleep that you get, but then there's a subsequent problem. When you stop taking marijuana, you get what's called a REM rebound. And so if you've been using, and this is where a lot of my clients and my patients talk to me about this, if you've been using marijuana to reduce the amount of dreams that you have, and then you stop taking it, your brain recognizes that it has a deficit of REM sleep. You have not made any new connections in your brain in a while. And this is where people say that, you know, potheads are kind of stupid. There may be some actual truth to that because you're not getting the REM sleep and making new neural connections. When you stop taking marijuana, your brain recognizes that it has this deficit in REM sleep and it tries to make up for that deficit. And your brain is smart. It understands how much REM sleep you should have had, how much REM sleep you have not. Your brain not only goes back to having the same amount of REM it would have had, it does that, plus it tries to get back all of the REM sleep that it's lost. We know from the research that it never fully makes up that deficit, but you're gonna have longer phases of REM sleep after you stop ingesting marijuana. Now, this is problematic if you've been running away from your nightmares by taking THC, by taking marijuana, because now you're gonna have not only the nightmares that you used to have that were undealt with, but you're gonna have even worse and more prolonged nightmares because your brain is rebounding from the lack of REM sleep that it has. Does it get back all of the REM sleep? No, it doesn't. It never gets back all of the REM sleep, but it tries. And so you have these really intense periods of REM sleep, hence you have really intense, bizarre dreams. And you may be upset with this, you may be frustrated with this, but you gotta understand, you need REM sleep to survive, right? You need REM sleep to be able to continue and to, to think properly and to be emotionally regulated. So your brain is trying to help you, but because you suppressed it so hard and you didn't wanna experience that transformative and mentally healing process of REM sleep, it's now going to be even greater and more intense than when it originally started. And I love that Matthew Walker is very honest about the research. When there's something that he doesn't know or that's not conclusive, he tells you, and that comes to CBD. Uh, we know that THC has these negative effects on REM sleep, but with CBD, that's not as conclusive. And actually the thought is right now that CBD doesn't have a lot of negative effects on your sleep. It may be actually okay, but again, the science may not totally be conclusive yet. Right now, I don't think we have enough data to make some kind of, you know, meaningful sense out of it. Firstly, CBD does not seem to be detrimental in the same ways that THC is. Okay, but what's my opinion? And this is not your counselor's advice. I am not your medical professional. Go talk to someone local and make sure it's right for you. But my personal opinion, there's nothing wrong with THC. If you wanna smoke a little weed, if you wanna get high and have a little marijuana, it's fine. However, you do need to be aware of the ways that it's going to affect your body. And if you start to do things above moderation, which really is kind of the key for these things. I mean, human beings, just animals, bodies, living organisms in general need a balance. And if you understand that you're going to be shifting your balance by ingesting a substance, you have to understand how that's going to create a problem over here. Everything is going to do that, right? Let's say you have ADHD. There's a problem of imbalance with ADHD, difficulty concentration, difficulty regulating dopamine. You take a stimulant to help you concentrate, that's going to shift that balance, but it's going to create some difficulty over here. Everything is going to do that. I mean, if you drink a lot of water, there creates the imbalance of you're gonna to have to pee all the time. Everything has a balance. And so there's nothing wrong with doing that. Just be conscious and take responsibility for 
the imbalance that's going to create in your life and how you need to be the one to make sure that you're regulating and understanding you're not overdoing it. I know it's really interesting to watch people on the internet overdo things and be like a complete pothead. I mean, we seem to, especially in our American culture, really congratulate and adulate those people who live at the extremes of society. I mean, gosh, just look at the new TLC shows that come out every week. But that's beside the point for you. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it could be a great thing to enjoy. A lot of states are recognizing that too and making it recreationally and medically legal. So do it with understanding. Talk with your medical professional and make sure that you get it. Uh, but recognize that it's going to change your dreams and it's going to change your sleep and that you have to be responsible for doing that. Don't become dependent and live life with an open mind and free to take care of yourself. I appreciate it. See you later.